Hot News The Women's March was once a model of the modern nonviolent movement. Now it looms as desktop notifications are on. Get breaking news alerts from The Washington Post. Turn on desktop notifications. After a leader of Women's March Incorporated attended an event at which Nation of Islam firebrand Louis Farrakhan criticized powerful Jews, the public reaction was swift and fierce. Condemning anti in the months since, a movement that once bragged about its inclusivity has been roiled by reports of battles over. The impact is not, some see the rifts and rivalries as the expected growing pains of the most successful of the new wave of social movements. But the negative pub, the women's marches now loom as a lesson on what can go wrong when the decentralized grassroots movements that gain traction after Donald Trump's election adopt rhetoric and behavior that challenges public sympathy. Why shut that sympathy gap? Asked Tom Hastings, an assistant professor at Portland State University who studies nonviolent social movements. In the two years since Trump took office, activists have used a variety of tactics to reinforce their messages you organizing mass marches, disrupting legislators at dinner, demanding on-camera answers from a senator in an elevator, and chanting hostile messages outside a Fox News host's home. Participants in the, there is a battle within the movement to try to have the peaceful model ascend and the Antifa model evaporate, Hastings said. Even behavior that falls short of physical violence can threaten the sympathy gap. Demonstrations, not all agree on where to draw the line. Republic. Political scientists who have tracked crowd behavior say the vast majority of protests against the president and his policies, including the women's marches, have relied on non-combative means. Well over 99% of protests against Trump's agenda have been non-violent, even when protesters volunteer themselves for arrest through civil disobedience, said Erica Chenow, a professor of public policy at Harvard University's Kennedy School of Government. She began collect that commitment to nonviolent resistance was foreshadowed shortly after the 2016 election by a surge in sales of scholarly materials from a small Boston-based nonprofit group. A 900-page tome called Flew Off the Shelves. An 80-page, a one-year supply of literature disappeared in a week, said Jamila Rakib, executive director of the 35-year-old, which studies the use of nonviolent action to achieve political change. The controversy among the women's marchers erupted after a leader of Women's March Incorporated, Tamika D. Mallory, attended the event at which Farrakhan spoke. She subsequently, Emiliana Gureka, who is executive director of the Los Angeles March and describes herself as a Latin Jew, said the outcry will probably reduce the number of March participants across the country. She has been trying, Catherine Simianko of the New York-based Women's March Alliance said the disputes have been about more than anti-Semitism. Women's March in Simeon Co. said she thinks the negative vibes are at least partly responsible for a decline in Women's March Alliance fundraising, which she said grew from $45,000 ahead of the 2017 March to $75,000 last year but has now fallen to $20,000. The disputes have led the two groups to plan separate events in New York on Saturday U the annual ENA arranged by Women's March Incorporated and its allies. The New York mayor's office said that it worked with the Women's March Incorporated and partners to find an alternative location for its event. Linda Sarsour of Women's March Incorporated has tried to tamp down the controversy in media appearances denouncing hate. Central to the mark, we really believe that nonviolence is not passive, she said. It's very powerful. Albert Einstein Institution founder Jean Sharp is often viewed as a pioneer in the study of nonviolent action, which is promoted by groups and individuals whose work ranges from supporting research to providing online skill sharing sessions. They include Scott. Many warn against equating strategic nonviolence with the pacifism espoused by Mohandas Gandhi or Quakers and the moral commitment it entailed. It is a pragmatic approach. ICNC President Hardy Merriman said, 
based on a growing body of data showing that nonviolence is effective in achieving political goals you and that violence often backfires. Nonviolent activists vary in how rowdy they are willing to be. A new environment, we are 100% committed to nonviolence, said US-based organizer Gregory Schwedock, describing the philosophy as core, core, core to their mission. They have also caused disruption. In mid-November, many activists speak warily of incidents such as the November protest by a group called Smash Racism DC at Fox News host Tucker Carlson's house. Protesters banked two months earlier, as debate sharpened around Judge Brett M. Kavanaugh's nomination to the Supreme Court, the same group senior. Ted Cruz art, activist Lacey McCauley, who was present at the restaurant encounter with Cruz, defends the actions. I am far more a published after Charlottesville and based on an internet survey of politically diverse respondents suggests that strongman tactics can backfire for groups that have built their identity around ideals of peace and justice. Violence led to perceptions of unreasonableness, according to the study, which reduced identification with and support for the protest group. By contrast, Chenoweth said in an email, right-wing especially white supremacist groups are not typically politically punished for violence, since people expect them to be violent. Today's heightened partisan tensions sometimes prompt allusions to the 1960s when King and his followers promoted nonviolence to advance civil rights. You see exact parallels with that era, when activists, whose concerns included the Vietnam War and the environment, were responsible for and the government responded with force. But the 60s also set the stage for a theatrical style of protest that some on the left are trying to emulate today. Daniel Hunter, a Philadelphia-based activist, developed a following after he came up with creative ways to demonstrate against plans for casinos in the city more than a decade ago. The intent, he said, was to form a goal-driven campaign. Rather than one march after another, we built a whole storyline, Hunter said. It included prank, the theatrics won media attention, putting pressure on authorities to rethinking their approach and turning Hunter into something of a celebrity. Now he other act demands on my time grew after Trump's election, Hunter said. Gureka, of the Los Angeles March Group, acknowledges the challenges ahead as March organizers who were unprepared for their success find themselves running an ongoing movement. It's a completely sign up for email updates from the confronting. You have signed up for the confronting.